Tent. Herb. Welcome back to the shed. Um, on this episode, we're gonna start tearing into the interior. Um, I've gotta do some boring stuff to make a car a car, like brakes and you know seats and suspension and you know all the stuff that's not turbos and cool exhausts and stuff like that. Um, but is necessary. So we'll do that. I kind of was bad and yesterday I just turned zoned out and just started building stuff and got a lot done but I didn't film any of it so I'll go over what I did now and then get you up to speed um, and try to be better about filming today. Uh, like I said, still learning this whole thing and trying to document everything you're doing and trying to do it in a timely fashion is not very easy. Um, so shout out to all those guys that actually do that because I don't know how you do it. Uh, so yeah, we'll just keep moving forward, keep building stuff, um, and see where we end up after today. First off, I want everyone to notice my dope underhood lighting. Just an old track light from some house I was working on and they were throwing that away and I was like, oh, what are you doing with that? And uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. It makes it easy to see what you're doing. Um, what I did, I found an old Godspeed intercooler from I don't know where, so mounted that up front. And then uh, a couple two and a half inch silicon 90s, some two and a half inch muffler tubing, and we've got some boost pipes. Um, the masking tape may or may not hold. We might weld those up, we'll see. Uh, and got the three inch MAF um, in. That's an 012 MAF for the Turbo Bricks guys. They know already what I'm doing, but for those who don't, when you wanna run higher boost and make more power, you start to run into scaling issues with the stock MAF. Um, the closed loop stuff is fine, but when we get into the open loop stuff, if we start putting in bigger injectors, it's just referencing the maps in the ECU without any input from the O2 sensor, so we kind of have to uh, scale it around a little bit. Um, apparently the golden combo is 50 pound injectors, which is what those are, and the three inch MAF. So with a little 15G, I, I don't even know if I'll even get to that threshold, but I mean, we might go for more power later. It does have the IPD cam in it, so it should be a stout little uh, performer. We'll uh, see how it goes. Oh yeah, that's how this is gonna go. The joys of working on 30 plus year old cars that live in Canada. I wasn't gonna do the brakes, and then I saw this kind of stuff, and I was like, okay, we'll do the brakes. Don't snap. I'm in danger. Oh, uh. 
I have to space these out. <laughs> Why are you following me? What's doing, Hobbit says? Working on the car. You should try it sometime. Get lots done. Instead I don't of just even, screwing around. I don't even like cars. You screw around too much. See what happens when you screw around too much? Challenge is never finding one random bolt. It's finding two. Oh. No. In some cases, the primitive animals have been known to use tools. Next thing, um, this current setup would be fine if we're moving, if we're not, or if the car is sideways and airflow is less than optimal, we're going to need some kind of a cooling fan to suck air through that. And uh, I mean, the engines come with a mechanical fan, they're okay, I mean, they're perfectly fine when they're stock. If we're going to track this thing, and in my case, I want to do hot laps in it, we need a fan. So this is the biggest fan I could find that would fit on the footprint of a stock radiator. And I want to use a stock radiator, so if I smash one at the track, I can just go to the auto parts store and get one. I think it's off a V70, Volvo V70, so it was free. Um, these things just happen to find a way to me. And they come with a nice heavy duty relay, two speed fan relay. And uh, yeah, so I mean, you can't really zip tie this one straight to the rad. They don't work that well anyways, and the fan actually sticks proud of the mounting flange. So we're gonna build a shroud. Oh yeah, I think it's a ground switching relay. One speed? That's low. And then 
Wow, that's, that's high. Ooh. All right. It's a lot of wind. Come on. Come on, let's go. All right, some more progress that I haven't been filming because it's tedious and boring and everyone wants just wants to see the good stuff. Uh, front end's back on. Sweet, looks more like a car again. Got the intercooler, radiator, power steering cooler, and oil cooler all relocated and mounted, <coughs> excuse me, where I want it. Um, just had to move the oil cooler back a little bit because we've got this different style front mount up front. Uh, some wiring and stuff figured out and boost controller mounted. We'll go all the way. No, just kidding. We'll start, start low. Mild. Uh, yeah, got to weld the charge pipes, put in the O2 sensors, um, and fill it with some fluids. And then it's just about ready to start. <laughs> it's gonna take forever. All right, charge pipes done. Mass air flow meter in, exhaust, O2 sensors, fan wiring, it's full of fluids and oil. Um, yeah, we're just going to turn the key and see what it does. It's still on the factory computers, um, but it does have the 3 inch 960 MAF and the 50 pound injectors in it. And it's got a 255 wall bro underneath, so I'm keen to see. It might be a little grumpy when it starts. We'll see what it does. actually from a rotted return line which is why it's always good to start it and check you can show it up top there Nick I'll point to it so I didn't leave anything loose which I thought I did but this uh, flex line that goes off the return side of the rail down into the hard line that goes back to the car um, it's just gushing out of there. I guess it's all dry and cracked, so probably a good idea to change that. And good thing we saw it. Cars are fun. Old cars are fun. <laughs> Another successful day down. I'm freaking super stoked that it started up. Um, it puked gas everywhere, but it's 30-year-old rubber lines, and I'm kind of expecting to find things like that as we keep going into it. Um, I'd rather get it here than out on the track. So uh, it's easy enough to just put some new rubber line on. Um, my clutch uh, still giving me trouble. Um, same thing, rubber line, every time you push the clutch it balloons. So probably want to change that before it breaks. And we're kind of just in the reassembly phase now. I dropped off the drive shaft at the drive shaft shop. So they're going to shorten it while in New York. Um, 
I'm going to try and do something with the front knuckles and arms to get some more angle and camber and maybe a bit of caster because um, these cars drive really well with a little bit more of all of those things. Um, and then, yeah, maybe put some seats in it um, to keep throwing back together. It's almost ready to drive. So super happy with the progress. Um, we're just going to keep going and we'll get it done and then we'll do a road test. Till then, thanks for watching.